Hey y'all, it is Andrea with Sucks For You in Houston, Texas, and sorry if there's some noise in the background. I've got fans on and people are getting work done on their roofs post-hurricane. But um, anyways, I, um, I'm going to start some seeds that I've been collecting off of plants that have been generous and given me seeds like this uh, Thelocactus setospinus, and hopefully I don't drop them, but I just pulled that off. It was a little fruit. It was red and it finally started turning brown. You could pull it off sooner, but um, I'm, I'm hoping these have actually been on there for a long time, maybe a year. So we'll see if they're still viable. And I already have some little pot set up. This is some sterilized soil. And of course I need to put some labels in here, on here. But um, for now, I'm just gonna <laughs> refer back to the video for what I put where. So this is some pre-moistened sterilized soil and I sterilize it in the microwave it's been the easiest way for me if you if you skip that step I mean you're, you are gonna take some risk but um and getting like pathogens and mold and mildew whatever going on in there moss all kinds of fun stuff but really I'm just sprinkling this the seeds on top uh, again the soil's already nice and uh, moist very very it was very wet and then I let it drain out a little bit so that's that one I'll put that there to help me remember let's see what else we got all right I broke down and got my tripod out um actually I've been saving some seeds and these I think they might be too old they are um Echinopsis mir mirabilis and there's the, the flowers on these things are amazing and they smell fantastic and the only thing, oh, there's a lot. Oh my gosh. Um, they're short lived cacti, basically. Some of them, you know, live up to 10 years, maybe a little more. But the flower on here was ridiculously gorgeous and smelled absolutely amazing, like grape bubble gum, if I recall. And I'm going to go ahead and just throw these in and see, see what happens. So. These will get sprinkled right here, and I'm going to tap them down just a bit. Maybe I'll just save the rest of these just in case these do start. Yeah, that's a lot. <laughs> so many in this pod. Put you back in there. So that was, again, I harvested these in October of 2021. Um, who's in here? Oh, actually, it, this is a parodia, and I'm not too sure if these are viable. I don't know if it's self-fertile, and it didn't get crossed with anything else. Ow. So some of these do have spiky bites, spike spikes. Let's see if there's, there are seeds in there. This one is very bitey. So we'll do this in the top third row. And a few seeds there. I'm gonna go ahead and get the rest out. Crack it open over. There we go. So yeah, that'll be an experiment because I'm really not sure if those are viable either. So one, two, three, put the pod there for now. Let's see what else we got. And these are, oh, this is for the Alumifolia. And I don't really want to start these because I already have so many. And the cool thing about Horthia limifolia is like the most prolific seed giver of Horthias that I've come across. It's like almost every time they flower, it produces a seed pod. So assuming those are definitely self-fertile, self-pollinating. See what else. So I didn't label some of these because, oh yeah, I labeled it. Uh, this is Fralia castiana 
Um, I'm not going to start these either because I already have, I already have some growing. So I'm going to save these, maybe donate or give them to someone. Those aside, or maybe start them at a later date. Here's some others that have been stashing away. Uh, 623 Parodia Albissima. Not sure if that one is self fertile. There's not that many in there. We'll just go ahead and try. There's not that many. I might be thick. I think I'm gonna use this for a couple different types, like more Fralia, Castiana. Here's a Neurostigma. I um, actually already started these and they're doing good. I'll show you those in a minute. More Limifolia, more Fralia. Here's another Fralia, um, Ligiana. I started some of those. I have those going already. Some Gymnochilicea. Um, Mehanovicii. This is from Crescent City Cactus. Let's just go ahead and start those. Yeah, let's we'll start these. They sent these just back in like maybe May. Put all those there. Sprinkle them all on top. All right, two there. <laughs> okay, these are the what I'm not sure if these are the seeds or not, but this is what <clears throat> I harvested, harvested, from the Syningia Leucotrica in the last video. And I'm just going to pop those in with the little parodias because I just don't have a very good feeling about either of these you know, being able to germinate, but it's just for fun. So I'll put that there for now, and again, I'm going to go back and create some new labels. Hmm. Can you guys... See, there's a mosquito trying to bite my camera. Look at that. Oh my god, I have to kill that. Well, I thought I had some Dorstinia seeds around, but I can't seem to find them at the moment. And they are pretty old anyway, so I, I'm just going to go ahead and start more of these Echinopsis Mirabilis. I really hope they grow. This is such a fun cactus. So you can see the seed pod still chock full. I know I'm blocking with my hand, I'm sorry. Oh my gosh, there's, there's so many and there's still a bunch in here. So, that's what we're going to do. Just sprinkle them all on top right there. So these two are going to be the Mirabilis note to self. I'll tell you what, I do go back and check my videos sometimes to be like, okay, I moved this plot around, it lost the label, what is it again? Oh yeah, and it's been really helpful. And I also have a journal where I, um, a spreadsheet where I write down everything, when I start it, where I got it from, new plants, all kinds of cool stuff. So, once I get these labels, I'm going to put a little, like, dome cover that comes with this kit. I didn't use the actual, um the plastic insert. I'll show you what those look like and I'll go ahead and show you some seed updates too. These are the plastic pots. They're all together. They get fit down in here and they're pretty cool to grow with but um, I kind of just like sewing directly in a little nursery pot. Just because, I don't know, the, the only reason I got these is like, oh I can see what's happening in here but you kind of you really can't see like roots or anything unless it's just totally filling up. Um, these are Focarias that I started. I started these on the video. Um, these are all started in February of 2023. And there's this really cute little, this is a Gymnochilisium Ochoterinae. Probably not saying that right, but I'll pop the name up on the screen. Isn't it cute? It's like a good size little chunker. Um, over here, these are Astrophytum, Merostigma, and those are those, there's these, and these came from this mama right here. She's got a flower going. 
another one on the way. These are not self-fertile, but I was lucky that um, when I bought this, it had been in flower in the nursery around some others that were flowering, so it got cross-pollinated. And when I tried uh, the seeds, they germinated, so yay. And you're doing great. Look, look how big that is. So cool. Those are the bishop caps. Um, here's the Fralia Castellanas. Oh, wait, don't fall. These guys. And they came from this mama right here. And these are cool. I think I've mentioned it before in a video. But the flowers, they don't always open. They will form the seed pods inside. And I think that's what's happening in here right now. So it looks like, yeah, it looks like how it did before. Now then, after this, after this finishes, it usually will push out another flower too. So I just kind of let it hang out on there. Such a cool little sea urchin looking plant. And these are starting to get some of the mature characteristics. A couple of those on the left. Super, super cute. This is the one Copiapoa maritima. I started when I started these guys. Um, it's really like a cute little columnar dude already, purplish. So that's fun. And these are um, Mammillaria gomerii. Gomeri. These, this, and these were all started on the same date. Um, and then the these other Freilias, they also form flowers, seeds the same way as the these Castianas. So I think it's called Cleistogamus. Cleistogamus. So if you look, it's probably like a bunch of seeds just all down in this pot, but. And normally I'll just like pull off a little pod and then like all these little seeds come out. Ah, ah, ah. You saw that? Go back over here. I'm trying to jump. See the flower, the bud is opening and those are all seeds right there. So I've really never had a cactus put out more seeds than this dude right here. It's kind of it's not like pretty <laughs> like some cacti, but it's cool. It's like purple and neat. Okay. It makes a lot of babies. All right. Oh, I forgot to mention I did start using some shade cloth. Just a little bit of shade to help block that east facing sun because it's really bright and hot and I have these like strong magnets. Voila! Shade cloth activated or not, depending on how overcast it is. Um, but it's just really because it's so hot <clears throat> and they're on a metal shelf and the sun. Hi, Annie. You, took, you woke up for your nap? Why are you wet? <laughs> it's just laying in a water puddle. That's cool. I love you. I love you, Boosh. And these seeds, these are the astrophytums, a variety of asterias that I started, oh, I think February as well. And they're getting a lot of like little, a lot more characteristics, like their little spots and stuff, but they're growing kind of slow and I guess it's just because it's hot and that's just what they do. But I um, also, these were getting like really like red, which means too much sun. Like you can see that little guy right there. So I, I've been using some of the cloth over there too. On the hotter, brighter days, I'm going to take it off when it's nice and not so bright. <laughs> All right, so here's the lid. It just goes on top like that, and that's it. It comes with some little covers. Oh, look. So you can, like, 
close off all the air or leave it open. I'm just going to leave it open like that. And then it'll get nice and moist inside and stay moist. And then um, I'm going to I'll label these first, of course, cover them up, and then just pop them on a shelf somewhere. Check back like every hour <laughs> to see if anything's germinated yet, like we do. Uh, yeah, that's the state of the seed union uh, with Sucks for You. And it's hot. These guys should like that. Won't have to use a, a, seat, a heating pad. Um, got plenty of light out here for them. And then right now I can feel how heavy it is. It's very hydrated. All the soil is nice and thoroughly watered. Once they start to uh, dry out a little bit, I'll add some water down to the bottom. Cover it back up and then we'll be done. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. Wish me luck. And again, I don't think, you know, I don't think all of them are going to germinate because some of them are not very fresh, are they? But it's just so much fun to watch them grow when they do. All right, guys. Stay cool out there. Happy growing. Later.